We previously introduced LU decompositions of matrices, link in the description. We saw how not every matrix has an LU decomposition, because some matrices require that we swap rows in order to get it into row echelon form. In this video, we'll introduce a new method called a PLU decomposition, which can work for any square matrix. So for a matrix which doesn't have an LU decomposition because row swaps are necessary, we may perform the row swaps first, and then find an LU decomposition of the resulting matrix. And as we'll see, this still gives us a fine way to solve systems of linear equations with A as the coefficient matrix. But how does this row swapping turn into this new PLU decomposition? Well, the idea is that those row swaps we have to perform on A would be performed by multiplying by the appropriate elementary matrices. Row swaps, being elementary row operations, can be performed by multiplying by an elementary matrix. So let's say that Q is the product of all the elementary matrices that are necessary to swap the rows of A as needed. If we multiply that by A, which would be the coefficient matrix in the context of a linear system, then we're going to have a matrix QA, which does have an LU decomposition. So we could say it equals L, a lower triangular matrix, times U, an upper triangular matrix. Now Q, being a product of elementary matrices, certainly has an inverse. So if we call its inverse P, then we can rewrite this equation as this. This comes from multiplying on the left on both sides by P, which is Q inverse. And then we get A equals PLU, a PLU decomposition of the matrix A. P is called a permutation matrix, the idea being that it permutes the rows of A. So that's a PLU decomposition, or also called a PLU factorization, of the matrix A. And as we said, every square matrix, in fact, does have a PLU decomposition. Now, here's how it can be used to solve a linear system. We have the system AX equals B. We can then multiply both sides on the left by that matrix Q, which swaps the rows of A as needed. Then we have QAX equals QB. And of course, the solutions to this system are the same as the solutions to this one. And this system we can solve using the LU decomposition method, because of course QA, the coefficient matrix of this system, QA does have an LU decomposition, so QA equals L times U, and we can use the familiar method of solving systems with LU decomposition. We'll spend the rest of the video completing this example. We're going to find the PLU decomposition of the matrix A and use it to solve the system AX equals B, where A and B are as seen here. Looking at A, we have this leading zero in row one. That's not going to work for an LU decomposition. We would have to swap rows of A. We either need to swap rows one and two or rows one and three, but we got to get this zero below row one. Let's say we swap rows one and three. So we're going to have to take AX equals B and multiply on the left both sides by a matrix, which will do that row swap. So here's the elementary matrix Q, which will swap rows one and three. Thus, when we do Q times A, we get this matrix where rows one and three have been swapped, and this matrix does have an LU decomposition. On the right side of the linear equation now, we would have Q times B, and we'll bring that in when it's time to solve. But now, understanding we've multiplied this equation on both sides by Q, and thus we're in this situation, QAX equals QB, we're going to use an LU decomposition of QA in order to solve the system. And so, of course, we now need to find an LU decomposition of QA. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson going over LU decompositions and the method used to find them. I'm going to go over it quickly here. This is our matrix QA. What we're going to do on the left column is perform row operations to get it into row echelon form. At the end, we end up with the upper triangular matrix U. On the right, we're going to make suitable changes to this lower triangular matrix to reflect the row operations that we completed, and in total, we will construct L on the right column. The first thing we do is multiply row 1 by 1 8 in order to introduce this leading 1. Now, in the position where the leading 1 was introduced, in the matrix L, we need to put the reciprocal of the scalar we multiplied by. 
the reciprocal of one eighth is eight. This is, in a sense, undoing the row operations that we perform here. We then need to subtract four copies of row one from row two in order to get a zero below that leading one. So doing that, this is our new row two. And then in the matrix L, since we introduced a zero in this position, row two, column one, we need to put the opposite of the multiple of row one that we used. We used a multiple of negative four. The opposite of that is positive four. And again, since we introduced the zero in that position, it's in that position of L where we put the positive four. Also remember, it's when we just multiply a row by a scalar that we insert a reciprocal. It's when we add a multiple of one row to another that we use negatives. The negative of negative four is positive four. Next up, we're going to double row two in order to get a leading one. In this position, we introduce that leading one, so in the corresponding position of L, we use the reciprocal of two. The reciprocal of two is one half. Next, we're going to subtract four copies of row two from row three in order to get a zero below that one. Since that's the position where we introduce the zero, in the corresponding position of L, we'll put the negative of negative four, which is positive four. Finally, we'll multiply row three by negative one over 23 to introduce a leading one. Since we multiplied by negative one over 23 to introduce a leading one in that position, in the corresponding position of L, we put the reciprocal negative 23. And now we have a matrix in row echelon form, that is U, and then over here we have L, our lower triangular matrix. Where we had a dot for an unspecified entry, we would put a zero there because no change has to be made. But if you recall from our discussion on LU decompositions, what this matrix L is, is just the inverse of the product of all the elementary row operations that were necessary to get this into row echelon form. Since u resulted from a by performing these operations, if we multiply u by l, it will undo the operations and thus get us back to a. That's why this works. We still have a little ways to go, but the good news is that we do have our PLU decomposition now. L is this lower triangular matrix that we just found, and of course, U is the upper triangular matrix that we just found. You may recall that P is supposed to be Q inverse. Q is that permutation matrix we use to swap rows of A, and its inverse is itself, because if we swap the rows and then swap them again, well, in effect, we haven't changed anything. So Q inverse is actually just Q, and so that's what we would call P. And this is the PLU decomposition of A. And now we're prepared to solve the system. AX equals B, of course, we rewrote as QAX equals QB. So this here is Q times B. This is A with its rows swapped, which is Q times A. And Q times B is equal to this. So this is basically going to be the new coefficient matrix, and this is the new constant vector. Notice how, of course, the constant vector just had rows 1 and 3 swapped. Next, we use the LU decomposition. We just found an LU decomposition of Q times A, our coefficient matrix, and so we're going to replace Q times A with L times U. There's L, there's U, there's our variable vector, and there is QB. Now, employing the hopefully familiar method of solution using LU decompositions, we set Y equal to U times X, and then solve this new system that comes from replacing U times X with Y, Y being a new variable vector. And so now we have LY equals Q times B. So here where we had ux, we now have y, a new variable vector, we're making a change of variable, and then we still have l on the left, and then of course we have qb on the right. So we're going to solve this system for y, and then we'll be able to use this equation, knowing the values of y, to then solve for x. The great thing about LU decomposition is at this stage we have a lower triangular coefficient matrix, so this is easy to solve with what's called forward substitution. The first equation tells us 8y1 equals 2, and so y1 equals a fourth. And then the second equation tells us 4y1 plus a half y2 equals 0. And so plugging in y1 equals a fourth, we'd have that 1 plus a half y2 equals 0. So a half y2 equals negative 1, and so y2 equals negative 2. 
Plugging that then into the third equation, we can solve for y3 and find that it equals negative 9 over 23. So now, using the equation y equals u times x, where remember this is u times x, well now we know the values of y, so we can solve y equals u times x for x. Here is the y vector, we've just plugged in all those known values. Here's the upper triangular matrix u, and here's the variable vector x we'll now be able to solve for. Since the coefficient matrix u is upper triangular, we can solve this easily with back substitution. We start to get into calculator territory here with all these fractions, but you could still feasibly do this by hand. The last row tells us that x3 equals negative 9 over 23. We plug that into the equation that comes from the second row, and we can solve for x2 and find that it equals 8 over 23, and then we can plug everything into the equation from the first row and find that x1 equals 7 over 23. There all that is at once, so you can take a look and verify the details. So that's what PLU decomposition of a matrix is and how to use it to solve a system of linear equations. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my linear algebra course and linear algebra exercises playlists in the description for more. If you find my videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to additional videos and extra practice, and if you join at the premium tier or above, you can access the lecture notes used in my courses. Thanks for watching. Bye.